So let's talk about Kathy Wood's $8 trillion valuation for Tesla, effectively $2,000 a share by what, 2030 or something? 30, I think it is, right? Yeah. yeah. She just did a video with Larry Goldberg on Farzad's channel. It was about a, I think the full video was over an hour and 15 minutes. And part of it, they talked about that valuation. What are your thoughts on that, Matt? Yeah, it, I think it's actually pretty reasonable. We've published our own valuation about two years ago now, coming to pretty similar conclusions, as long as you are giving some credit for Optimus and for FSD, robo taxis in particular. I think the it sounds crazy. And I think people are going to point out to the fact that she had some, I don't know what her 2020 price target for Tesla in 2025 was, but I'm pretty sure they didn't get close to that. Um, and so it's going to be very easy to just say, oh, look, like Kathy's always talking up her book and coming up with these crazy numbers that don't make any sense. And admittedly, $8 trillion just sounds bananas. But this is something I've had a couple of conversations with James Dalma about it. And he's, I mentioned it too, like, the numbers you get are just nutty when you start looking at this just from a first principles basis you know, and like taking everything into account, not just assuming they sell as many as they can at the highest possible point. Like it has to make sense for the consumer too. It's like looking at the TAM and looking at like the prices decreasing over time, both for Optimus and for the RoboTaxi. But like when you start doing that, you're like, oh my gosh, they're going to be printing money if this actually works the way that they say that it will. And so when you don't just assume that because the output of your valuation model or your earnings model or whatever is crazy, if you actually say, all right, what if this is true? What does that look like? Then yeah, you can get to an $8 trillion and eventually 10, 20, what did Elon say? Like 29 trillion in, in the out years, there was some number when he was looking at the Optimus valuation of like essentially having significant portion of the entire global workforce be a humanoid robot and doing so at great economics. And at that point, it's like services are plentiful and there's deflationary pressure. So you've got like higher GDP and lower prices. Like what is it, even the economy at that point? That was Elon's point. And it, I think when you think about this from first principles, that's the kind of area that you land at. And so I think it's... it's I think, Matt, even our crazy Optimus valuation. So once Optimus starts, essentially we value it potentially at $3,400 a share. So I think it's like 34 or 15, just the Optimus piece, like nothing else. And I may be disremembering, but I think the the valuation of the Optimus piece in like 2034 was something like 26 trillion. Yeah, um, it was in that neighborhood. Yeah. And this was before Elon talked about this at like the annual shareholders meeting. So I think it's reasonable. I will give ARC some credit. They were right and they were wrong. So their price target was about 3,500 if I remember right. So if you take 3,500 and divide by 15. Split uh, adjust. Yeah, split adjust it. It's essentially you get $233 a share. Oh, wow, um, okay. <laughs> I take yeah. it back. Yeah, they were very accurate with the share price, but the really uncomfortable place where they're wrong is they assume Tesla's business would be much further along with how many cars they would be making and how far along RoboTaxi would be at this point. They got some stuff right, they got some wrong. Our valuation, you know, if we're going off our 2023 valuation, we valued the car business at around $350 a share to 380 and RoboTaxi at 1100 a share without Tesla licensing it to other players. So combined, that would be $1,500. And that's like a what it'd be worth today if mm -hmm. people valued it correctly. And then that didn't include Tesla bot. So if Tesla bot was on its way and Tesla was heavy in that space, they were a scaled player in that space. And yeah, we can see it far exceeding, I don't know, 20, 30, 2000 a share. <laughs> so I do, what happened to ARC is definitely what happened to us too, though, where we definitely assumed Tesla would be further along than they are right now. If you told me back then, or even more so in 2021, that Tesla in 2025 still might not break 2 million units, I'd be like, oh my gosh, maybe I got this thesis wrong. This is, mm -hmm. it's actually shocking to me 
how much they struggled to get volume out there. Now, I think a big part of the reason for that is they just have done nothing to increase awareness of the vast yeah. majority of the car buying market. I think that is we starting to compact get... would be out by now too. Yeah, I thought compact would be out by now. And this might be an uncomfortable topic. I haven't even brought this up with you, but like, is Cybertruck a flop? They're not doing 10,000 a quarter, I don't think. And I would struggle to see them doing much more than that. So for all the time and effort that went into designing another car that is frankly just selling like at roughly at Model S and X levels, was that a wasted endeavor? Now they certainly got some technology, 48 volt and steer by wire and other things like vehicle to grid that are like helpful things to have gone through the technical know-how of, of doing. But to me, as I'm just thinking about how much effort went into that for not really increasing the TAM too much, I'm wondering if that was even a good use of time for the next major product that they launched. I don't think Cybertruck's a flop. I think 4680 until now is a flop. And they, up until now, they still haven't figured it out. Maybe, maybe incrementally, internally, they something has changed, but they've had big issues making the 4680 battery, which is essentially necessary for the Cybertruck. Granted, Tesla can put whatever batteries they want in a Cybertruck, but they're not doing that as far as we know. They could they're, put they're 21, not supply constrained right now. You can get a new Cybertruck today if you want to, essentially. So is your point that if they figure out 4680, they'll be able to lower the price and that'll increase the demand? Yeah. Yeah. That if they figure out and scale 4680, that they would lower the price and begin to pump more out. But right now, because 4680 hasn't been working that great, they're keeping it at a lower pace. Yeah. I can see, even if they do figure that out, and I don't know, let's say they get it to $60,000 price point or something like that, I, I still would struggle to see them selling much more than 25000 a year or something like that. And so it still just seems to be a product that is not likely to move the needle too much on overall deliveries and volumes. But maybe that's okay because they're developing this technology that's going to go into all these other products down the road. To me, just as the more I was reflecting on that, it just seems like it maybe was not necessarily the right order of operations in terms of trying to get out to the masses. That is not a truck that's going to appeal to the masses for sure. I think Tesla is going to eat up the luxury truck market. And I think the ceiling is much higher than 25000 a year if all they grab is like the luxury truck market. Yeah, I'd be maybe, curious to see. I'm skeptical. Maybe if they don't offer one around 50000 like a single motor one, then maybe they're not able to do 250,000. Yeah. There's a, there's an interesting comment I'm going to click on here. The insane modeling for Optimus is the same as when all those Tesla bulls modeled vehicle sales at 20 million annually by 2030. I would agree with that actually to a small extent that you can't just take what Elon says and model that out as fact. So when I was modeling out 2030, I think the number I was using back in 2020 was the 12 million. So I assumed a very steep haircut from what Elon said they were going to do. And when you're going through a modeling exercise like this, it's important to look at a couple of different scenarios. So we looked at like a base, a bear and a bolt case, but this is a product unlike anything else. And while we say we've got insane numbers and it seems wild and nutty, as James Dalma said, just because the answer is nutty. Like that's why most people are actually going to agree with that commenter that like, yeah. no, like that's, that's never happened before. That won't happen. We are entering the age of AI. This is not like the internet. This is not like the industrial revolution. It's a completely different thing where you are significantly increasing knowledge and the, the way that almost all value in society is made is on knowledge. And so if you can, in a very short period of time, significantly increase the like the knowledge capability of all the humans and then eventually you get smarter than the smartest human and then as elon has said eventually you get like artificial intelligence that is smarter than the collective intelligence of humanity yeah you can get some pretty nutty numbers in an assumption like that if there's just new materials that are being built that can do all sorts of stuff and you can figure out how to like continuously optimize manufacturing processes and all that's done in an automated way in an agentic way like that's, that just creates insane numbers. And so you don't want to just say that will happen. And so you like go and YOLO into, 
deep out of the money call options or anything like that. There's a huge amount of execution risk. There's a lot of stuff that needs to go right. But the point is you can use your imagination and first principles thinking to say, yeah, like this could work out that way. And I think that's where my head is on this. And I've been rambling for a little while, but I want just one last point to wrap it up. I was able to envision like robo taxis for a very long time, but I never baked that into my model until about a month ago. I modeled it out as an upside scenario that, hey, if they figure this out, here's the valuation impact of it. But if they don't, here's just what the value is on FSD as a good ADAS system that maybe has a higher take rate over time. Great. So I think with Optimus and those crazy things, that's where we are right now, where you can come up with a model that is definitely going to be wrong, but gives you directionally an indication of where the value might be. And then as it becomes clear that the Optimus actually works and creates value and has very significant demand and has good gross margins, then you can bake that into your base case valuation. And by that point, if they're, if all those things are true, it's hard to imagine that Tesla wouldn't be significantly higher in valuation by that point. So it's, I think it's a lot of people just assume because you've got crazy numbers that you're just like this dreamer bull, but no, you can actually have a base case scenario that doesn't assume the crazy things, but also take a look into the future saying, what do those crazy things actually look like when you do a discounted cash flow on it? So. That's my valuation rant for now.